In this video we're going to look at the types of timber structures. So there's two different types basically, light timber and heavy timber. Um, so we'll look at both of those. So light timber framing is dimensional timber, in other words it's cut, timber cut to standardised widths and depths. So the usual size is what's called a 4 by 2 that's 4 inches by 2 inches, Americans will call it 2 inches by 4, which is 100 mils by 50, uh, 6 by 2 which is 150 by 50, or 4 by 4 posts which are 100 millimetres square. Now those are nominal things, uh, uh, sizes. If they are trimmed, in other words dressed, they, they sort of cut off the rough bits, um, then they will be slightly smaller than that, a couple of millimetres smaller in each dimension. Uh, if they're just left rough um, as they were cut, um, then they will be s close to those dimensions. Uh, sizes are rough sawn, yeah. so machine timber has smaller dimensions as I mentioned. In New Zealand we normally use radiator pine, pine because that's um, it works, it grows really f quickly in New Zealand um, and that's what most of our forests are planted in. Although sometimes you'll find um, rimu or um, other native woods used but they're very expensive uh, because they're very hard to get a hold of, we don't really want to log out our native forests. Uh, because it's exposed to moisture, if it, if it, um, because timber can rot if exposed to moisture, then um, we need to treat it. So interior timber, so something that's going to be um, inside, not really exposed to moisture, is H1.1 or H1.2. So it's a nominal treatment, but not much. Uh, if it's exposed to uh, weather and it is above ground, it's H3. So that means they sort of um, they inject a, a um, chemical into the um, timber, which uh, um, prevents the, the rot from sort of um, uh, happening. Uh, but you need um, more serious treatment for um, timber that's in the ground. So if you've got poles that are in the ground, they should be treated to H5. Should also remember that it, the uh, chemicals when they're injected into the, the timber um, really only soak in to the timber. So the middle of the timber is still untreated. So if you are cutting a th length of timber, the middle bit, it doesn't have any treatment. So you either uh, paint on some treatment or you make sure that that part of the timber is not um, in the ground or exposed to moisture. Uh, you should really treat the ends, but you, you don't see that happen often. So a light timber frame house, uh, you can see that it's got, um, it's basically made up of a frame, normally the 4 by 2 the 100 by 50 uh, sort of made into shapes for um, the, the walls, uh, where there's openings like um, uh, here for windows or for doors, there's a lintel going across, um, or a header as they call it here, uh, and that's usually a 6 by 2 or a um, or an 8 by 2 um, so 150 by 50 or um, sometimes up to 100 uh, sorry 200 by 50 uh, then there's the roof frame oftentimes it's a truss uh, to provide the rafters and then obviously the, the wall material uh, is um, hammered onto it as well as the roof material onto the top there so the timber frame construction in New Zealand Oftentimes you'll find that they, they'll, they'll put the frames together in a factory or they'll put it together on site. So here you can see that that frame was delivered to site already or they've nailed it up on site on the, on the, on the wall, uh, on, the, on the foundation slab and then they lift the whole frame up um, and uh, secure it in place. Once they get the, the one that goes perpendicular to it in place, they'll nail them together and they'll be a stable structure. So once the whole house is built, it's a stable structure. So oftentimes um, the, the frames are sort of put together, delivered to site. Um, they are light enough for for a crew of, of carpenters to actually lift them into place. So uh, oftentimes you don't need a crane or anything like that. Uh, it can all be done with manual labour. Uh, you can see that there's these um, reinforcing things all stuck out of the ground and what they'll normally do is they'll drill holes there uh, and then the, uh, well these are bolts actually, and they'll um, they'll drill holes in the steel and they'll bolt the the um, the bottom stud of sorry the bottom part of the of the wooden frame onto the the bolts that are sticking out to s to secure it. And as I said, once you've sort of got it all in place, the guys will hold it up, and then someone will either nail a a support strut out like that to hold it up temporarily, 
or you'll put another wall in just to sort of provide that sort of support for it. The other type of um, timber frame is a heavy timber frame. Uh, they use post and beam construction and they use large size timber, timber sections so 6x6, six six, um, 150 by 150 6x8, um, you know, 150 by 200 mils so big bits of um, of timber sort of and so it's not as um, so with, with the light frame timber house there are a whole lot of studs sort of going in between them but um, with this one here the the, the beams um, the, the posts we, we call them columns the columns would be sort of you know three three four meters three five meters apart from each other so in a way the structure is a lot like a steel structure or like a cordial frame um, just looking at a picture of one, so here's one being constructed here and you can see it looks a lot different from their light timber construction there. So I've got um, uh, the, there's the posts or the, the columns there, the beams going across, you can see they've got some struts there sort of holding it all up. Uh, and then they will, they might even put a light timber frame in between each one of those to nail the wall to. So here's another picture here, oftentimes it's used internally because it sort of allows for a big wide open space. With the uh, light timber construction you can't get very large open spaces. You could put steel beams in um, or you can actually use this heavy timber frame construction to do that. So an example uh, is our Farakai, so you can see they've got posts here, they've got special um, steel um, connections and they've got the um, struts all sort of going off at different directions which makes quite an attractive appearance. You can also use glue lamps, so uh, with the ones that we looked at previously these were just um, bits of wood um, that have been cut to the right size, but glue lamp is a whole lot of smaller bits of wood that are all glued together. Uh, so that's what they it's glue laminated timber. Um, layers of dimension timber, so this is oftentimes 4x2, sort of 100 by 50 or um, in this case here this will be 6x2, um, all glued together and um, it allows a flexible shape. So you can actually shape this timber, you can bend it, um, twist it, whatever you want to do and then glue it all together. So once you've glued it all together the shape will be um, held because um, the glue um, keeps the, the, the glued um, connections sort of keep the thing in the right shape. So it's a flexible shape, good appearance, high strength to weight ratio, better than steel. Uh, it's durable with the correct treatment, good fire performance. Uh, in a fire what happens is you get a charred layer sort of forming on the surface and the bit inside it takes a long time for the fire to actually burn its way through that charred layer. So a heavy timber um, structure will probably last better in a fire than a steel structure where the steel will start um, getting soft with the heat but the, the timber will still uh, the char but it won't um, start failing until um, a much longer period of time and it's a sustainable material and it can get up to 15 meter span or even further than that so here's some examples of glue lamb you can see that what they've done there is they've got a glue lamb beam and they've actually been able to bend it because you can bend those smaller bits of um, the 4x2 you need to soak them up quite a bit and you need to have them green but they can be bent and then when you glue them all together it it won't it, it'll be a curved structure uh, here's a picture of a pool oh sorry a well it's not a pool it's a skating rink but our pools are quite good for this too because it is quite resistant to to moisture if you've treated it properly and it's quite a attractive and it's light as well here they've made some glue lamb uh, well yeah, glue lamb. Some glue lamb um, portal frames, and they're just lifting them into place. And as they lift each one of them into place, they will put a uh, the the, w the the rafters in just to support it in the um, that direction there. And here's a picture of a another portal, and you can see that there's not too many um, bits of not not too many frames there, but they do use large um, large bits of timber there sort of secured to the floor. So how is it constructed? Um, often you have the connections as steel brackets. So you can see that this is a custom made steel bracket allowing the, um, the roof uh, supports to actually go off in different directions. Um, 
Alternatively, you can have shaped timber collections. So in this one here, they've actually um, uh, cut out a little hole there. They've shaped the ends of this to sort of allow this to slot in, and then they have bolted it in or doweled it. So that's a dowel there. Wooden, um, they've drilled a hole and then driven a wooden um, dowel into it. So that's traditional type um, woodworking with it. Nowadays, we'd probably um, just put bolts through. This takes a lot of effort, a lot of time to actually get these shapes. Another one here, you can see that they've got a steel plate um, set into the glue land beam. They've um, bolted it all in, and then it bolts onto these two supports here. Uh, for heavy timber construction, these um, the timber that you're handling is too heavy for people to handle, especially at height. Uh, and so oftentimes you'll find, especially when you're putting on the roof, um, you'll need to have a crane to, to drop those things on. Um, so here you can see them sort of um, craning it into place. Now with a light timber construction roof, you might need a crane to put the, um, the trusses uh, into place uh, onto the roof, but then you might just um, manhandle it um, to, to get them into place. But yeah, with these heavy timber construction, the the sections are so heavy you do need to, um, you probably do need a crane to lift them into place. Okay, so that concludes um, the timber uh, structures video.